we're going to talk about ideas, but we're also going to talk about writer's block because I think that's come up a couple of times. And I reckon that ideas is a very good time to talk about writer's block as well because it's all part of the same wheelhouse. Um, who we got in? Andy, hey, uh, Alistair, Steve, hi, Arnie, uh, John Joseph. Uh, and it says one other. I don't know who that one other is, but hello, Mandy, Gwyneth, Paul, Steppy32, Vape, Box UK on the road. Rasmus, welcome back. You've never experienced writer's block and you know why. Well, maybe you can um, speak more on that when we get to that point in the conversation because I don't believe there's any such thing as writer's block. And I've said that before, but we'll come to that when we come to that. Uh, M NMC651. Hi. Happy New Year, Erasmus. Okay. Listen, guys, should we start? Should we just start? This is the first... Wait. Wait a second. This is the first one of the new year. Happy New Year, everyone. Of course, because we did the last, the first one of this section, we actually did last year on the 30th. So Happy New Year, you guys. Um, we kind of launched the projects um, last week. So for anyone who um, doesn't know what that's all about, basically, um, I just invited everyone to take on a three month project, something that meant something to them, something that was important, something that wouldn't have happened anyway, something measurable. And so I think about 16, I've got 16 projects on the go, including my own, about a, a third of them are meditation. So people have taken on um, a meditation commitment. And some of them are things like writing scripts, Amber's going to get two voiceover jobs, Donald's going to write 30 minutes of stand up. So there's lots of whatever field you're in is what people have taken on or what what is important to them. And I had this thought the other day, guys who are doing the projects. And by the way, if you want to start a project uh, and you're, you're coming to this like after we've already officially started, feel free to just jump in. Just ask at the end every week if anyone um, wants to do, wants to declare a project. And that's cool, man. Cool. No rules, really, other than what you make for yourself to make it to make it work. Um, forgot what I was going to say. What was I going to say? Uh, uh oh. What, what, what was my thread? Where was I going with that? About I was talking about projects and I was saying, oh yeah, so then I had this thought, um, what to help, to help, because I have an idea of what my intention is with these projects, but you know, you can't sometimes lay that on people. So I'm, I'm, I came up with these questions to kind of help to almost like putting a, a rock in a tumbler, you know, smoothing off the edges and, and making it into what you intended. So these questions are kind of geared to keep you, your mind thinking at a certain level in a certain way about these projects. Because for me, here's what it is. For me, the goal is not the projects. The goal is the mode of thinking and being that it puts us all in. So it's not about, it's not a, it's not only, should I say, about the, the goal or the project that you realise, but it's also about the way that you sort of, the way that we all relate to ourselves as creatives and how, and how that, that can be transformative and affect every area of our lives. You know what I mean? Like, so, so it's not just about, say, for example, it's not just about Donald having 30 minutes of material. It's about all the different things and new synapses that get triggered in his brain moving forward in terms of how he wants to work and write and how he sees himself and what he believes is possible for himself. Yeah, does that make sense? Oh my God, I'm sorry, I missed all these comments. Sometimes if you don't scroll up, it doesn't scroll up. Do you know what I mean? If you're not at the bottom of the list of, of comments, it doesn't scroll up. So I've just realised I wasn't. Pop documentary. Hey. Um, uh, John says, I agree. Steve says, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Amber says, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Uh, Donald says, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Tommy's joined. Um, Tom says, Nappy New Year. Um, and uh, Steve has finally started his project. Congratulations. We can, I think we should have a little, little project roundup uh, towards the end. Uh, John Joseph says, uh, hurry up. Some of us have got to get to court. Okay, he's quoting one of my jokes. Um, defeat O Jovens. I don't know if I said that right. But anyway, hey, Rasmus writer's block. He's waving. So maybe that's something you want to hear about. Um, 
and uh, Gab Gabari has joined, Kajmiko, and uh, yes, good. All right, I think I'm caught up. There we go. All right, so let's start this conversation. This conversation is about ideas. And um, I, I thought that it would be good to talk about the actual creative process because I've realized that a lot of these conversations are about the being that is being creative rather than actually the process itself so I thought okay let's have a conversation actually about 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 the actual process of creating and ideas I thought was a good broad one to to start with um with ideas has come up before and I've pretty much said what the fundamental things I think about ideas but in this conversation, perhaps we can go a little bit deeper or, or broaden the to broaden the topic out a little bit more, depending on what you guys are thinking or what you want to say about it. Stuart, hello. Um, so first of all, what are ideas? Well, I mean, listen, I'm just going to throw some thoughts out as to what I believe they are, but you don't have to agree. You can try it on. And if it doesn't work for you, then, you know, don't feel like you have to take it on or whatever. It's just some thinkings. I'm throwing out there but I feel like ideas are kind of they're not they're not they don't come from us they come through us I I feel as though my experience with them is that they're these entities that kind of they kind of just bubble around us looking for a place to call home um I think that they're just out there waiting to be birthed and they're looking for the most viable candidate I don't think they're conscious in the way that we are. I don't think they're thinking, hmm, I like the cut of that person's jib. I think I'll, you know, manifest in their brain. I think they're more intuitive than that. I think they're, more, you know, functioning at a more intuitive level. I also think they come from a field of infinite possibility. So they're not governed by time in the way that we are. So they can, you, you know, they can loiter around a person for it, what appears to be a long time, but that's judged by linear time, which is how we we're ha what we're governed by as opposed to eternity which is where ideas live does that make sense we're starting at a very deep level um so again like i say you can try this these ideas on for size if you're not fancying them i'm all right with that i'm okay with that so 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 if we imagine that these ideas are just out there we're almost like antenna uh you know or we have antenna, maybe that's what the mind is, is like drawing these ideas down to us. Because don't you feel like when you have an inspired idea that it suddenly it suddenly manifests in your brain? It wasn't it. It's not like you had to um, calculate to get there, as it were. It's almost like you cultivated a space, perhaps in which it could in which it could arrive or it just ping just showed up. Haven't you ever had that experience like creative folks? Um and if you are creative, then, you know, ideas, creative ideas are going to be circulating around you. You're, you know, you could potentially be inundated with ideas. You know, as a painter, you might find yourself constantly coming up with ideas and sketches of, of things that you would like to paint. As a writer, I'm sure many writers have this experience of like, oh, that would be a great idea or even you're watching a TV show or you're watching a documentary and you're like, that would make an amazing film or that would be a great book or, you know, whatever it is. And and it's not, I don't think it's just about being a creative. It Well, what I mean is I don't think it's about artistic creativity. I think if you are, if you're an engineer who's, who, you know, say you're working at the Apple factory, I'm sure that in the same way, those, those guys have ideas swirling around them, waiting to be birthed through them. Ooh, how about making the screen sweepy swipey? You know, that that's that type of thing. That's a sort of in, inspired, you know, almost like sideways shift in the way that things have been done before. It was an idea that previously didn't exist. Probably, you know, in, in different parts of the world, people, engineers were thinking of the same thing, but it just happened to manifest itself at, at, at Apple. The other thing about ideas is they're not... Um, you see how we are can be a bit possessive about things, Ideas aren't possessive. They're not like the only place I can come out is through that one person. So ideas might spread themselves across the world. And, you know, that's when you'll see three or four films about the same topic come out at the same time. Or even in comedy, you get it all the time. 
Like there's, you'll get, you know, three or four comedians all telling roughly the similar joke because probably they had the same inspiration that made them write, write the same thing. Uh, so, so ideas aren't precious about how they, they manifest themselves. You just have to be the fertile ground into which the, the idea can plant itself as a seed and in which it believes it will grow. If it doesn't think that it's going to get anything from you, it won't stick around. One thing I noticed was that when I was regularly doing comedy, I was experiencing those moments of feeling inspired, not just sitting down and writing jokes. I felt like I was dictating them in a, in a way. Obviously, I had to fashion them and, and you know cut stuff away to work out what was actually just the, the, the root of why it was funny, just to make it really concise. And that was what I really liked about the way that I, well, the way I told jokes, I like to make them really concise. Um, and I also noticed that as I started t doing other things, that jokes d didn't come to me in that way anymore. Um, and there was quite a long period where they just didn't bother me because they didn't come to me because they knew that there wasn't going to be an outlet for them with me. And so they would go elsewhere, probably. And now they're starting to circle around again, because in my mind, I'm starting to think, oh, I wouldn't mind doing a couple of gigs just on my terms. That's one of the reasons why I stepped away from stand up. But I wouldn't mind doing it again on my terms. And so the jokes are starting to go, um, excuse me. Um, so. So so it's a two it's a it's a it's a it's a it. it not a two-way street, but it's like a, there's sort of two sides to it. There's you being the fertile ground and the idea coming to you and wanting to, and, and planting itself in you, as it were, or, and, and being allowed to be expressed through you. Um, I'm just going to go back and read your comments. Just so you know, feel free to um, comment uh, as we're going along. If it's off topic, I probably won't read it, um, but thank you, bless you for, for sharing it. But I'm just trying to stay on track. Um, and yeah, and uh, if I've got a train of thought, when I come to the end of that train of thought, then I'll go back and read your comments and uh, see if anything needs to be responded to. And if not, we'll just chill and carry on. So Alistair says, sounds almost like Buddhist philosophy, like the idea, uh, ideas circulating. Is that what you mean? Uh, John Joseph says, uh, ideas, I feel, are ideas that seem to float amongst the universe. And it's only when a person perceives person perception becomes strong enough they're able to receive them more frequently absolutely and I'm sure that the more someone is in their craft the more they are going to experience ideas like they're just going to be that sort of powerful receptor for these for this universal energy Amber says I'm constantly inundated with ideas as an actor and a writer and I think yeah I, I mean I wouldn't be surprised if the more sensitive you are as just as a human being the more likely you are to be bombarded with these ideas. Uh, hey Steve joined the conversation and Bansar as well. Donal says ideas are always floating around we just we just give them their accents. <laughs> I mean, I I think that they I would say that ideas probably don't come through us most of the time don't come through us fully formed and what's great about us is that we're the filter through which an idea can take a particular form so where um, a song sung by Adele will sound a particular way when Chris Martin from Coldplay would if he were to sing the same song it would sound completely different which is why cover versions are so amazing because the same idea is being filtered through a completely different system that is different because of all the things it's experienced, the life it's lived, the number of years it's been on this planet, blah, 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 all those different things. So we, we, we give it flavor, we give the idea our particular flavor. And that's why one of the reasons it's so important to be authentic in your creativity, because if you're trying to manipulate this idea into something you think it should be, it immediately becomes inauthentic and unoriginal because you're trying to shape it into a pre- uh, you know some pre-idea that you have of what it should look like authenticity is one of the key facets of the idea be you know being that perfect combination of the filter it's passing through and and the entity that it is William hi Steve says I, I preached this morning but I only realized this was happening at 5 p.m last night I wrote my sermon in three hours after I delivered it I was told I have a gift for preaching yesterday I learned that yeah I mean I mean the, hmm, I mean that's a really good example is that because 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 
the good thing about it is because you had the time constraint, it got you to get yourself out of the way so that you could the 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 sermon could move through you, and and be be birthed as it were, and that's the same and that's the same principle really that we want to start applying to what we're creating is getting ourselves out of the way. What does that look like? not judging what you're creating, not trying to force it to be something that it doesn't want to be, listening to it, allowing it to express itself because you've you got to remember that this thing has an intent all of its own of what its shape is and if you try and squeeze it into being something that it wasn't ever meant to be then you're, you might be, you might be killing it in, essentially, not killing, not killing it dead but killing the, the true spirit of what it was. Um, and when people see an idea um, uh, realised like that, they do respond to it. It resonates because ultimately we are all spirit having a human experience. And that spirit part of us, when, they, when it sees spirit manifested, responds. That's why powerful art is, it has the effect on people that it does. I watched um, Bohemian Rhapsody the other day and... Oh gosh, I can't even feel like how how strongly it impacted me. Just I, you know, I don't want to, no no spoilers. I mean, we all know kind of what happened, but like the final scene of the film uh, is is um, the Live Aid concert, and Rami Malek is just incredible as Freddie Mercury. And I was in pieces watching this thing because he, in his performance, managed managed to manifest or, or or allow to pass through him the spirit of Freddie Mercury and the film the 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 way that they created that live aid um moment uh, of Queen's performance because it was a standout performance when it happened it was just electric and that's quite rare and it's good that it's rare because if it was happening all the time we would become you know we would become um what's the word we'd become immune to it so it's good that it's rare, but it's very exciting when you are in the presence of spirit and it resonates with something deep within you. And a lot of the time it happens with music, but it can happen with art. Um, it can happen in nature. It can happen. It can happen. It can happen. It can just happen. So as creatives, if you're going out of your way to give that experience to people, one of the ways to do that is to allow the idea to come through you and not to impose too much of you on it, steward it into existence. <sighs> yeah, steward it into existence. I feel like I wanna write that down. I'm gonna write that down. Steward it into existence. I kinda like that. Thanks for that, Steve. Potassium 3000 has joined. Um, Steve says, writer's block does not occur when you're under pressure. Well, I mean, it, I, I, I wouldn't say it doesn't occur. I mean, it can do, but pressure, I mean, that's why procrastinators are, are better when they get close, closer to their, like down to the wire. But it can do, you can still screw yourself by just allowing the pressure of, of the whole thing to, to paralyze you. But hopefully, hopefully not. But when we get to writer's block, Pressure, time pressure or not, will be an irrelevance. Um, Personal Freak One, hi. Amber says, I do feel that story ideas were lagging for a bit, but I wasn't focused on that. Now that I'm thinking of it again, they're coming back. Every Even better that they're about things I've already started. Fabulous. Um, Kajmiko says, what? You're not doing stand-up comedy anymore? I didn't say that. Uh, confabulation glow. Hey, oh, George, George. Uh, Richard, hey, Wimbleck. Yo, William says, if you do stand up, please make uh, please make one in York. Yeah, will do. Donald says, yeah, writing plays, bits of novels, etc. was my creative focus for a long time. I find the opposite to you, really, that since I took up stand up, the stand up took those ideas space. Um, Well, I mean, stand up. Aren't you saying the same thing that stand up now comes where those ideas used to come? Is that is that not what you're saying? Um. Tommy says, watched it a few times already. I think you mean Bohemian Rhapsody. It's amazing. Uh, hey, Stephen. Wimbleck says, lovely. Um, William uh, says, I found my creative creativity writing software for control and meta metering systems. Um, say a bit more about that. I don't know what that means. And Donald says, I still want to go back to the other writing, but for now, stand-up is the avenue for my creativity, which suits me because I can get instant feedback, which I can't get from unpublished writing. I mean, the feedback is instant with stand-up, isn't it? Um... 
Um, would you say comedy or doing comedy is a calling? Bansa, Nana Ban is it Nana Bansa says? Um, so, uh, yeah, it could be. It could be a calling. I mean, some people, there's definitely people I've met who are just natural comedians, not in the sense that they're natural stand-up comedians, but they're just, they've just got funny bones. So that could be their calling. I, I, it's hard to say. I think that that's not for me to dictate for somebody. I think it's for someone to, to say for themselves, yo, this is, it's in my blood to do this. I, I've got, I got to do it. I think I've encountered comedians and people at comedy actors who it is just in their blood to do so actually you know i'm gonna say yeah um kieran has joined and miss is that mrs andal or mr sandal <laughs> anyways hello all right so moving on so whoo okay that was a lot that was a lot that was literally the first <laughs> the first sentence of my of my notes was um damn guys this was a um uh, gosh, this is a overdue, a long, a long overdue topic or due topic. I don't know. Anyways, so, so as creatives, you're going to attract. Uh, hey, Matthew, by the way. Hello. hello. Um, as creatives, you're going to attract and possibly even be inundated with ideas. Um, they're going to come through in different um, states not always necessarily fully formed like you know you hear about how um sam what's his name sam smith said he wrote his bond song in 20 minutes it, i mean uh, yeah he, he wrote his bond song in 20 minutes i was just gonna say here he get you get told what chords you're allowed to use for the bond songs so that limitation probably makes it easier to just write well if we're only allowed to use these four chords then that kind of makes it a bit easier to write the song but still the thing came through in uh, almost fully formed and, and it's a beautiful song same as yesterday the beatles song written on the on a, a beer mat you know came through again fully formed but some don't some don't even know what format they're meant to be for what medium they're supposed to be experienced in some are meant to be experienced in several mediums uh so yeah they can come through in different states in terms of us as creatives one of the gifts that we can give ourselves hang on let me just go back on some comments because i think i might miss some um don't know you saying hell yeah banzo regarding um comedy being a um what do you call it being a calling um amber says i'm hilarious i'm not a stand-up com comic there you go you see <laughs> you see what i'm talking about um and george says i know i haven't allowed space for creative ideas in the past six months so new year's resolution ideas can't come without space exactly there's got to be there's got to be somewhere for them to land or something for them to come through but that's okay to like just say no to them right now because that's basically what i'm going to come to um jt cried krypton krypton hello and uh uh, Callan, Callan, hello. Um, okay, so Wimblek says, I agree. Sometimes I see an image for a scene or hear a few lines of a conversation or just see someone's walk and wonder what type of person that is and if their story is worth telling. Exactly that. You get a little bit of inspiration and then the the the, the mind does the rest, fills in the blanks. Um, and uh, William says, I had to bend uh, a suite of computer tools and functions to control and measure oil and gas flow. With one set of tools, I produce over 30 different systems. We're going to come to that. But basically, that's the idea of like, if you sit, I've spoken about this before, is that when you sit down to create something, inspiration meets you there. She doesn't come first. I, I imagine, I was thinking about how, how, to, how to share what, how I see inspiration. I think of her as almost a, if, if a lily and a ballerina had a love child, that's how I see her. <laughs> If you can conjure up that image in your mind. But I feel like she's quite a delicate thing and she doesn't want to come and be with you unless you have extended the invitation. And the way that you extend the invitation is sitting down at your desk to write. It's going to your easel to paint. It's picking up your camera to take a photograph. Is you know, doing whatever it is you need to do to allow her to feel like it's safe to come, come visit you. I don't think she's delicate that you could break her, but I think she just needs the invitation. Um, uh, Joachim, Joachim, is that right? It's been a while since I've said it, so I'm, I'm nervous I'm getting it wrong. How do I choose? My head is full of weird stuff I don't know what to do with. Fabulous. I'll come to it. Um, William says, I just used to sit down at my P PC and ideas jumped into my head. There you go. Fertile, gr fertile ground. Steve says, important to always carry a pen and notebook with you. You always, you're always having thoughts. I use the notes on my iPad and my iPhone all the time. 
all the time. I've got like a hundred different notes, different, put them in folders so that literally there's never a time when I'll get caught short having an idea and not being able to make a, at least a very basic note of it. Wimbleck says, never heard someone say Wimbleck like that. I think of it as Wim <laughs> Wimble, okay, Wimbleck, Wimbleck, Wimbleck. Oh, Wimbleck. No way, am I saying it? Wimble, k. Anyway. Um, okay. Good. All right. So, so what's this? What, what do we do with this situation where we feel like there's ideas and we haven't written them down and there's so many ideas in my head? Jakim was saying something along those lines. Okay. Here's the thing. Here's the most important thing. You're the space through which these ideas will pass. You don't have to get down every single one. You don't have to worry about missing a good one. First of all, a good idea is patient. Patience is obviously a, a, um, a facet of linear time, which is where we live in their domain, i.e. eternity, infinite field of possibility. There's no such thing as time, so patience is irrelevant. But for us, we have to consider, we have to remember that ideas are patient. If you're the place that it's supposed to come through, if you're the, if you're the horse it wants to back, it will stick around. It will also... It will also come back whether you actually get a chance to write it down or not. Have you never had one of those situations where you thought, oh, that would be a really good film. And then a year later, having forgotten about the whole thing, the same idea comes back to you again or, you know, a piece of writing or whatever it may be in your field. So don't ever think that an idea, if an idea is meant for you, it will not leave you. Also, that if um, that, that if you're an if you're a, a creative, you will die with good ideas great ideas unrealized it's just the way it goes you are the space through which these things can come that's what you need to cultivate that's what you need to look after not the ideas themselves you know we get too precious trying to hold on to things like so many times i've been to so many like writing seminars and workshops and stuff like that and there's so many people that are like i don't want to share my idea because someone might steal it that is a thinking of somebody that he's, he's so has got such a tight grip on on their idea that they that they that they're blocking their own ability to be that space through which ideas could come. It's an amateur move to think that someone's going to steal your idea and do it exactly the same way that you're going to do it. You know, just there's so many there's so many films that are the same, basically the same story over and over and over again. But nobody when the person creates the next version of it, they don't think, oh, I'm just stealing that idea. They're like, no, I've got something new to say with this basic premise. So 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 don't think that just because a good idea has come to you that you have to act on it. Don't think that just because you haven't got time to act on a great idea, you're going to lose it. If, if you are meant to have it and work on it, you the, the space will become available in your life to be able to realise it. But sometimes you've got to let that shit go as well. Sometimes you've got to go, that was a really good idea. I'm not going to work on it. That's OK. That Once you realise that you're the space through which they can come and that you don't have to have this net catching every single one of them, that gives you freedom to then create the career that you want rather than spreading yourself thin and trying to do a thousand different things you know that's a fear-based mentality because you're basically doing all those thousand billion different things because you don't you think oh if I don't hold on to these fantastic ideas I'll never have a fantastic idea again wrong if you are the sort of creative who is inundated with ideas that's not going to ever stop <laughs> That's not, unless you sustain some sort of brain injury, that's never, never going to stop. You're always going to be, a, so they might not be the sort of ideas that you want. Like if you're trying to write a book and then you suddenly start getting ideas for songs, I don't know, maybe that, I don't know if that's even a thing that could happen, but, but you got to remember you're the space through which these things can come. So you don't have to be precious and hold on to them. There will always be more, always be more fantastic ideas coming through you. But I bet you people who, who are who are professional and at the top of their game in whatever field i bet you they've got loads of stuff that they've half started loads of notes of things that they want to do they've probably got books notebooks of, of of things that they want to realize because they have they are also in that boat of like of being inundated but they also know you there's no point in starting five different projects and never finishing any of them start one stick with one stay with that Make that real. Make honor the idea into to the to the point of completion, rather than trying to do a thousand different things because that's not honoring anything, not even yourself. Um. So yes, 
that. Um, some thoughts. Thinkings, people. Thinkings. All right, what we got here? Shit ton of tiny notes on my iPad, Google Drive, and uh, yeah, notes. Exactly, Amber. That's the way it goes. William says, doesn't work as well when I pick up my camera, though. I have to tempt her to join me. <laughs> okay. But then you, but you stick with it. For, you know, a lot of photography is about patience. Wimble K. Wimble K. All right. I have to sign off. Okay, but this is fab. Okay. And Jakim says, bye-bye. By the way, I didn't mean to. <laughs> okay, whatever. No, bye-bye. Thank you for being with us. Um, Jakim, I have um, a lot written down. Some of it scares me. Apparently the ideas think that that will tell a horror story. The ideas want to be a horror story. The world needs horror stories. People love horror and horror is a very good allegory for whatever is happening in the world right now. Bird box, Handmaid's Tale. Um, Kajmiko, uh, then yeah, he said, Kajmiko says it, said it already. Then make it a horror story, publish it or whatever it is, however you want it to be manifest. Uh, Jay Close and Sean have joined. What's up? Steve thinks uh, sometimes we need to have an idea clear out in order uh, in order to let others the better ones come through nothing is wasted absolutely hey patrick and george says i like the language of honoring the idea yeah me too shall i write that down no i haven't got time <laughs> but i'll remember that I, I i like that yeah and not in the sense of like being precious about it and being snobby about it but just saying listen this you you were gracious enough to come to me um Let's see where this whole thing goes. Let me let me get myself out of the way so that my own procrastination, my own ability to complete things doesn't stop you being birthed. Um, Donal says it's like a carpenter. They will have to dis, uh, discard a lot of wood before they're left with what is useful. Fantastic analogy. Um, Pat, hey, welcome. John Joseph says I got particularly uh, I got properly published as, as a novelist because I stuck at writing my novel for five years. A persistence and determination truly paid off. And that's the thing. That's honouring the idea. Honouring the idea. All right. Wow. This is a good topic, you guys. Um, okay. So no need to be precious about them. And here I've written they were never yours anyway. They were never yours. anyway anyway Sean you might have to go and watch from the beginning <laughs> what is an idea because we did talk about it right at the beginning um the gift okay and I'm just going to read you what I wrote they came through you they're not of you um and people who try to hold on to ideas they forget that the gift is not the idea the gift is the opening that you are the gift the gift is the fact that you are this conduit through which these ideas can come matcha and apple juice don't worry it does look like pond water but i assure you it's delicious okay i've said that already but just repeat it if you don't act immediately ideas will be patient they exist in a timeless realm and the f <laughs> we tend to panic and fuss over these things it's not necessary and i've started to trust now that I can tell that the, the human part of me is the one that panics and goes, if I don't write this now, someone else is going to come up with the same idea. Like I've got an idea that is exactly the sort of thing that would be on Black Mirror. And I'm thinking, I've got to get this out now because otherwise he'll do it. And then, you know, he's stealing all the good sci-fi ideas or whatever, or good sort of high concept ideas. But you've got to trust that if this idea is, is continually knocking at your door and just going, I'm still here. Um, it's doing that for a reason and that that you 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 can you can tr just believe in a higher in a higher power in terms of the, whether this thing is meant to be or not. Owen, hi. And Patrick says, I'm in a society that's very conservative. How do I exp how do I express out of the box ideas and make a living? Um, I think uh, hmm, let me see. Let me see. How do you do that? How do you do that? Well, first of all, I think you've got to get a beat on really how conservative it is. How much is your own projection onto it and how much is really what's there? And I'm not saying that it isn't as conservative as you think it is, but it might be worth seeing just what's what's there. Um, often in really conservative societies, there's usually a little, um, what's the word? Not on opposition, but a, oh, Okay, okay, all right, Patrick, Patrick, Patrick. I mean, right, Nigeria is conservative, but there is also a very progressive element of it. So you've got to find your tribe. That's what it is. Um, um, that, I would, yes, I get what you're saying about it's conservative, but I don't think it's so conservative that you couldn't, 
um, express it. But what you gotta do is, um, I heard this term recently, skillful means, and it's a Buddhist term, which means teaching people in a way, it's about, it was about Buddha trying to teach people, but thinking that it was almost gonna be impossible to share these universal truths that he had. And he was taught, teach them in such a way that they can understand. And it might be little bits at a time. And it might be that at first it might seem, um, um, what's the word, uh, contradictory, what you're teaching them. But you just give them little drip feed, little bits at a time to make it palatable. So you so if you go into a super conservative scenario and you're like, you express yourself fully without sort of testing the lay of the land, and then you get this backlash, what people tend to do is go, it's them, it's not fair. But you didn't approach it in a way that took account for who they are. So you can, you can do this. It, people do this. People find a way to dance with the, 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 the conservatism to bring them over to entice them over be the pied piper bring them over to you and also find your tribe so that you don't feel like you're you're alone you're not alone i know that because i know i know enough nigerians to know that there's enough progressive people there that you you can find your people sean says i mean is it discovery of one person or a group or even a memory of a previous plan oh i mean that i don't know um that I couldn't say, Sean, because I don't I just don't know enough about the infinite field of possibility and what is beyond the realms of sort of what humans can conceive or certainly what I can conceive. Um, so I don't so I can't say any more about it than that. I guess I'm talking about how to relate to I find, finding a way to how to relate to them, because at the end of the day, what do any of us know what, what they are? They could literally be electrical impulses in our brains. But I want to describe them in the way that I have as being entities coming from this infinite field of possibility so that we can relate to them in a particular way that's kind of awesome um Patrick says thank you cool no worries and uh Bansa says has there been a time where you uh where you concentrating on an idea and tons of ideas come rolling in and even adding to the initial idea and that and that asks do you get skeptical lol um and Steve says woo people and Zoe Ash has joined hey Zoe um, I don't know why my voice went so high. Um, okay, so Bansa, yes, yes. Um, as long as the ideas that are coming, that's inspiration. That's her dancing with you. That's her showing up. So you can go with that. If the ideas, however, that are coming once you've started on your initial idea are taking away from the initial idea, then that might be your procrastination. So you have to really, and this is what I'm saying about getting inundated, is you have to manage this relationship with these ideas because it's very easy when you start to get loads of good ideas is to start to think I have to I have to work on every single one you don't if it's feeding the initial idea and it's taking you in a direction you want to go in then super but if it's taking away then you need to park these ideas there's an interesting Elizabeth Gilbert um, TED talk which a lot of people have seen by now it's very famous it was one of those ones that goes viral and in it she talks she describes how Tom Waite had this experience with a song where he was driving and it, it, it was it was coming at him and it, it wanted itself to be written and he was just like you're just gonna have to wait I'm driving you know and so that's the relationship you might need to have with uh, with with ideas it's just like can you give me a second <laughs> I'm doing something because they're not they're from the infinite field of possibility they're not about the fact that you're trying to cook or you're driving somewhere you've got to pick the kids up they're just about I'm, I'm ready I want to be born I'm ready to be birthed you, you know if you were literally pregnant the baby wouldn't be like is this convenient are you sitting over a toilet when I let your waters break or make your waters break no baby comes when baby comes so ideas are the same um okay um Richard um and right oh ryan hey and steve says i mean woo people into the oh woo people <laughs> i thought you meant like woo people <laughs> that would have been woo comma anyways i mean woo people into the realm of your ideas don't keep people outside exactly exactly that's for um uh, patrick that's if you're still here patrick um patrick says what's your writing process especially for your stand-up Okay, um, let me just check the time because I'm, I got a lot to get through, guys, and I need to talk about writer's block. Okay, pa Patrick, very simply, 
Um, I got two processes. One is I work with somebody and we just bounce ideas and we just chat about shit. And that's a really fun way of writing. And the other thing I do is I keep a notebook all the time. The thing with stand-up is the only way you can really write it is, 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 is on stage because you'll try something out it will not work or it will work. And then the next time you go on stage, you just add a little bit more to it. Or you might just be, you know, just pondering on it. And you think of a great tag. So you write that down, think, I'll try that the next time. It, stand up is one of those things where because the final delivery of it is on stage in front of people, the only way you can really get a sense of whether, and because there's a specific response you're after, the only way you can really get a sense of it is on stage. Some comedians who gig very regularly write on stage. So they'll have an idea, they'll just riff it out a little bit more. Next time they perform, riff it out a little bit more. And before they know it, they've got a 20 minute routine. Well, not before they know it, it takes work. But um, yeah, like Ryan's saying, it's the evolution of ideas. We're all doing the same thing, but with stand-up, it's just a bit public. <laughs> that's, that's the main thing. Um, okay, so Cyturf has joined. Hi, 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 hi. All right. So, 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 so. All right, we did that. We said that. We said that. Okay, so just because you had an idea doesn't mean that it's going to be... No worries, Patrick. Just because you had an idea doesn't mean it's going to be successful or even work. Just because you had a great idea, that should have said. Because the ideas, the idea, the idea's experience of success is not the same as yours. The idea's intent is not the same as yours. The idea's intent is to be as fully expressed as it is meant to be. That might be that you make this amazing film, you write this incredible book and nobody, nobody reads it, nobody watches it. It's unlikely, but that no one will see it. But 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 the but the idea just because the idea came to you, it is not pre-built in with success by your definition. So one needs to let go of the idea that just because it's a great idea, it's definitely going to work out. Because that might not be what the idea intended. It can be what you intend, but you have to separate the two the two different intents. Success by those terms that we use to define it in this realm are irrelevant in the realm that the idea came from. Being birthed is the success in its own right for the for the to, 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 to the fullest extent that it was intended is the is the is the goal is the success for the uh, for the idea. Right. Um, I can't say that name. I am I am Mo, Mo, Mo Luca, Luca. Oh, yes, you've been here before. I recognize the picture and the not being able to say the name. So, so also we don't need to hold on to ideas in the, in the, I, I mean, I talked about this just a little, a, a, a little second ago, but like just holding on to them because I think of them, think of them as, as bubbles and the more you try to hold on to them, they're going to burst. So just let them, if they're not meant to be with you, just let them go. Um, okay. So what happens when ideas don't come? Writer's block. Okay. So. So I teased this um, conversation uh, at the beginning and on, on my story. But basically, writer's block is when someone tells themselves that they have no creative ideas. They can't think of anything. I don't believe there's any such thing as writer's block. Because first off, on a practical level, if you were paid to write something or create something, you would create it. You know what I mean? Like if someone's handing over a dollar, you would find a way to create something. Even if you had to say to them in the meeting, look... Imagine this is like, you know, imagine this is a little bit more concise or imagine that I, I reckon I could probably put a better joke there or I could make that action sequence a bit better or whatever it was. You'd find a way. Even if you're not working professionally, there's no such thing as writer's block. What's happening is you are judging the ideas that are coming. You're judging them as being not good enough, not right, not what you're looking for. Whatever the judgment may be, that's what's happening. And so therefore you're telling yourself that you can't, that, that, that you're blocked you're not blocked. You're just not having what you consider to be great ideas. The ideas don't stop coming. Ideas are, are as fre frequent as, as buses. They're like thoughts, basically. They're just going to keep coming. They, there's, there's, there's very little chance that you will have a drought of ideas. There is a chance that you'll have a drought of ideas that you think are good. So that's a very different thing. And you, what you'll experience when all these crappy ideas come is you'll think, I'm blocked. I can't, I've got nothing. Um, you're just judging the ideas. So let go of this idea that all ideas have to be great by your, by your definition. If you don't like the idea, that's a very different thing from you're not having any. 
ideas. Um, so how, how can you get around the whole writer's block thing? Well, one thing that you can do is to place down placeholder ideas. So, for example, um, I in my book, you know, there's points where I've got to think of a funny fictional made up um, title for a self-help book. There's what I can, I'm thinking of one particular example. I couldn't think of any. So I just wrote funny title for a self-help book. It's a placeholder because when I come back, I'm not I'm at the time that I'm writing, I'm facing a battle of writing this entire chapter. And in amongst that, I've got to come up with brilliant ideas for fictional books, fictional places, fictional this, that. it's too much. So if I just put a placeholder, when I'm coming back to do my edit, all I'm faced with is a bit of editing. I, or I could come back and specifically try and take care of those placeholder things. And that's not as intimidating in any way as trying to write an entire, you know, looking at a blank sheet and trying to write an entire chapter. So put placeholders in. You know, as a musician, you can do that as as a, you know, in any, any in any form you can do that as a stand up. You could have. All right. This is a placeholder. Joke. I'm going to do a little riff about, you know, my relationship with my mum or something like that. And then <clears throat> you come back to it. You work on all the other bits that are coming more readily. And then you circle back and take care of uh, the bit that isn't isn't quite sort of manifesting in the way that you would like it to. Um, come. Yeah. So coming back, leaving it, leaving it alone, coming back is a great way of getting around a particular, when you're stuck on a particular thing. Get some air, go for a walk, talk to somebody, riff the idea out with somebody, get help. You know what I mean? Like, don't suffer alone, like tortured artist of, oh, I can't think of like how to solve this problem. It's like, you don't have to do it alone. You don't have to do it at all. You can come back, circle back. Um, when whole is more formed, oh yeah, okay. I was like, what the hell is that? So yeah, so come back, so come back to it when you have more of a bit, more of a picture of what the whole thing looks like. I, I, I think sculpting is a good example here in the sense of like, if you've got a block of wood and you're trying to sculpt a, a head or a bust or something, you don't spend hours and hours looking at the nose and just going, oh, I don't know what this, no if I'm getting this nose right. You kind of get a sense of the whole thing. You're working on the whole thing, and then when the time is right, you start to get into the detail. Well. The same is applicable when you're perhaps writing something or if you're doing a painting or whatever. You don't try and take on minute detail when the whole it does not exist currently. So same as with writing, let the whole exist and then come back and look at it. Um, yeah, and get and let go of the idea that what you're doing must be linear. Your your work must be linear. So so. So if you're writing a song, you don't necessarily have to write from beginning to end. You might just start with the chorus. I hear lots of musical friends, some musician friends saying that. It's like, yeah, I just got this great idea for a chorus. And it's like, well, that that doesn't happen at the beginning, does it? But it's like that's that that from there, that's a place in, from out from which you can grow. So approaching it from different angles is is a great way of getting around writer's block because it might be that just the beginning is where the blockage is and that if you come at it from the end even that you might get some inspiration um when i write treatments which is the thing i find the hardest to write the way that i now approach it because i literally i just sit there for ages and ages and ages just thinking i don't want to start there i don't want to start there i don't want to start there that's not right either. So in the end, I just write blah, 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 blah. Not literally blah, 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 but I'll just write what's true. What's true about this this TV treatment? So treatment is like given a description of a TV series, what you intend it to be sort of thing. So I'll just write and write and write and write and write and write and write. And then I end up with something that I can then go back and edit and refine. And I go, oh, no, that paragraph shouldn't be there. Just, once there's a hole, you can see what's wrong with it. If there's no hole, it's very hard to see what's wrong. Okay, so a bunch of people just um, joined. Um, Jan, Nettie, Rachel, uh, DJ Lincoln, hey. And Donal says, writer's block is just a convenient label, really. We have to have a way of expressing the frustration where we can't put the ideas down. For me, that is what writer's block is. Um, the frustration of not being able to put the ideas down. If the, the ideas are there, then get them down. If they're not there, then there probably are ideas, but they're not good enough. They're not the ones that you're looking for, which is different. Um, so another way around it is to just make a list of a hundred. In fact, uh, <laughs> ironically, I had, uh, I had what I thought was writer's block until I started writing out what we were going to talk about today. I thought I had writer's block in terms of what our, um, 
conversations what top conversation topics we're going to have and i um and i was like i have got no ideas and then i realized you got to practice what you preach so i just started making a list make a list of as many things as you can without judgment so you can't go mm, that's not good enough I'm not using that just literally write a hundred things and i find this is a really good method especially if you're writing narrative if there's something that's supposed to happen to a character but it could be one of many many different things that's going to take you in lots of different directions write out um a hundred or not hundred it could be 20 or 30 or whatever you feel is appropriate until you find the thing that you're really looking for that's really great and the process of writing really opens you up because you start to move out of you start to move out of this different out of the headspace that believes that there's a block and start and you start to move into a headspace of of creativity Lynn Manuel Miranda says that he thinks of creativity as this faucet. He's American, so tap for us. Whereby you turn it on and it's like the first dirty water comes out, but he trusts that eventually the water runs clear, unless you live in Flint. Uh, but uh, yeah, so he trusts that the water runs clear. And that's exactly what you have to think of with this writer's block situation i'm not talking to just to you donald to everyone is that like you turn the tap on yeah what's going to come out is going to be a bit crappy and muddy but after a while it comes comes clear and it becomes drinkable usable um all right so very very briefly oh yeah okay 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 so finally 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 what else can we do to um create this fertile ground for ideas to come um, I think some of the things that one can do are, is to create an inspiring environment. So that might look like just having a painting on the wall or something or just having or, or having where you work. If you if you're working in a particular space that's yours, having that feel good, create a good vibe, use incense. You know, I I uh, have a, um, a win big window in front of me where I write and lots of nice, beautiful daylight coming in. And the rest of the, the apartment is behind me and I have snacks on the go. You know, I just create an environment that's really, and I have a really nice chair, a really comfortable chair. And that really, that really helps me. I haven't got access to that moment because I'm at my mum's house, so I miss that stuff. But I'll be back there soon, and I that and I've got two screens as well. So I've got my laptop, and then I've got another screen next to it, so that if ever I'm googling, I can literally just go like that to the other screen. So I'm I'm literally on thesaurus.com all the time because I don't know any words. So and that's my really, it's a really great setup for me in terms of writing. So get your environment to be whatever you need to create inspiration to give you sort of a timeless space, really. Use music. I always have music. I there's a great um um oh gosh. Uh, playlist on <laughs> see I told you I don't know words there's a great playlist on um, Spotify called butter it's like a jazz mellow jazz kind of thing I have that on the background like all the time um, I find like jazz without lyrics particularly is really good for me for writing but whatever works for you right um um times of day as well like if you feel like like sometimes early morning late at night is is a good time to um create because of where our brain patterns are we alpha brain waves which is basically um gives you access to the, your subconscious and creativity and healing and stuff like that we're in the alpha brainwave mode early in the morning and late at night so that might be when you work best during the day we're more in a beta mode which is more of your doing functioning mode um so if you're writing during the day working during the day you might want to play some music. You can get, I think they're called binaural beats. There's a, a playlist called Hemi Sync. Hemi, new word, sync, S-Y-N-K, um, where they have music that is has those waves in it, those frequencies. So you can, you can start to tune your brain to get the right brain waves to be able to do the type of work you want to do. So there's all kinds of conscious things that you can do to cultivate an environment whereby you can be the fertile ground for ideas to show up. Also, live a bit of life, you know, if you're if you're if ideas aren't coming, um, a lot of comedians do this is they just go off and they have a trip somewhere or they just live a bit of life and they experience a different part of the world or different people or something. And that can generate so many new ideas, even just going to a museum or or just experience or going to some, doing something you've never done before. If you've never been to a football match, do that. 
and that will give you a whole bunch of Sarah Millican uh, bought a went for a bra fitting and that created a whole routine for a whole you know bunch of jokes because it was something she, she'd not I, I think she hadn't done it before and it was a kind of comical experience and it lent itself to being t being turned into material so 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 these inspirations can come from anywhere these ideas can you know if you if you if the more life experiences you've got the more that if the idea comes to you it's gonna go oh that person's that person's had the experiences to turn this into gold. I'm, I think I'm gonna chill with this person for a little while, you know, and hang out with them. So, all right, that's it, that's ideas. Thank you for that, guys. Listen, that was a very lively conversation and um, I think inspiration joined us, I do, um, which is um, very exciting, actually, that we can generate that between us all. Um, so listen, um, I feel like I got something here. Um, okay, so we've got a lot of uh, projects on the go. Um, I'm not going to ask you about the projects just yet because, like, we're only a week in, so people are just getting started and people are t trying out their, you know, the meditation and stuff like that. We've just got a few minutes, so I was going to ask this question. You know, I talked at the beginning about, you know, asking you a few questions to shape this experience of taking on the project to get to a particular place and um my the question this week was what what is important to you about your project so i wondered if anyone had had any thoughts about that or if you haven't had thoughts right now that you would like to share um and if not that i've put it i've put the question on my story so you might want to post type a type a response um i put one of those you know question stickers kind of thing but um yeah i'd be just really interested to hear what's important to you about the particular project you've chosen a lot of people have chosen meditation hang on i'm just going to open up the um my notes because i so i can remember who's doing what um yeah so me lucy tom c and carly uh are all doing oh and pulp documentary all doing meditation i'm just wondering why that's important to you for me i've just realized that um brain training just really giving myself just a little bit of perspective on the busyness that's going on in my mind is going to really support me going forward into 2019 I don't know what this year is going to bring but if it's if it's stuff that's going to be challenging I want to be able to hold on to myself by that by which I mean not get taken by emotions good or bad do you know what i mean like sometimes even when things are going great you get carried away with that but when things are going terribly you get carried away with that and that you spiral into those buy into those feelings indulge them more than they deserve so so for me that's why my project is important to me um i just wondered if any of you guys wanted to share very briefly we've got a couple of minutes um to say why yours are important to you or not i mean not that they're not important but you might not want to share. I'm having more of my sl sludge. Okay. I mean, you don't have to share. I'm, I'm, I'm very fine with, I'm very fine with you not. Okay. All right. Look, the, I was just about to say, oh, no one's doing it. Um, but Patrick, thank you. All right. So Patrick says to inspire people and make people laugh, make them happy. So Patrick, I don't have a project for you. This is a three minute project that we were talking about taking on starting last week and finishing. I guess that would be sometime in and towards the end of March. I guess the 30th of March it would be. Um, but um, I, yeah, I would love to hear what project you'll be taking on during that three month period or if you've got something that you're that's already going on. That would be interesting to hear. Anyone else want to share why their project is important? It can be as simple as um, what Patrick said, by the way, to, to inspire and make people uh, laugh, make them happy. I think that is a jolly good reason to be taking something on. Three minute project or three month, three month project. Okay, so Donald said, yeah, sorry, I made a mistake. Three three month project. Okay, so Donald says the 30 minutes is important to me because when I re uh, realized I had to abandon my plan to be a psychotherapist, I knew I needed an outlet. Comedy has become that for me. That's amazing. Yeah, to just give yourself a kind of, yeah, an outlet, a space to just, creativity be, it, being expressed is such an important thing. Um, I've got 10 seconds. 
Any, any, any last takers? Um, Lucy says, it might help with work stress, which I have previously just ignored and resented. Owe it to myself to try and fix it. Absolutely. Boom. You guys, that was so, like, <laughs> I was watching the countdown and it was like, I could see that I had like one second to go and then like Lucy just put a comment in right at the end and I was like, oh my God, I don't want to like not read anyone's comments after I've been like asked so many times like, and then someone's written a comment and then I've just ignored it or something. But anyways, listen, um, um, I'm just, I'm just saying goodbye really, um, saying goodbye properly rather than a ah, 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 goodbye. Anyway. Guys, thank you for being on that chat. That was um, a really great conversation. I really appreciate it. And I think that it stirred uh, it stirred the pot a lot for, for everyone. Um, uh, Tom says, my project is along the same lines as yours. I have a full year ahead and don't want to lose where I am presently. Perfect, perfect, perfect. All right. That's cool. I just wanted to, I just want to stir the pot in terms of, you know, in terms of asking those questions. And like I say, just shaping, shaping the experience a little bit for all of us so that we get to somewhere that isn't just about the projects. But it's all good. Patrick, are you on here? Because I want to know what your project is. Oh, he's not here. Okay, fine. All right, Patrick, um, if you happen to watch this, message me in the week um, and I'll explain about the project if you want to take it on in the context of this or if there's a three-month thing that you've got going on that you want to slide into this thing, then that would be really awesome. You guys, thank you for being here. As always, another great chat. And um, let's do it all again, like, next week. Cool? All right, I can say goodbye properly this time. Um, goodbye. Um, no worries, Tommy. Thanks for being there, here, as always. Um, you guys, um, have a fantastic week. You're all awesome. I can't wait to hear more about your projects and why you're doing them and how your awesomeness and your ideas are showing up in the world. Um, I'll see you all next week.